Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello, fellow Knife Junkie, and welcome to episode number 105 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. The Knife Junkie Podcast is the place for knife newbies like myself and knife junkies like you and Bob to learn more about knives and knife collecting. And uh, our midweek supplemental episode is the chance where we get to dive deep into knives, talk about some of the knife stories in the news, uh, knife product drops, talk about new things in Bob's collection, uh, just kind of generally talk about knives and what's going on. And uh, Bob, first of all, Just a quick mention of the the town hall we had this past Saturday. We'll talk about that more at the end of the show, but got to say how how fun that was. Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, As we record this uh, current episode, it was yesterday, and I'm still buzzing off of uh, off of that. We had so much uh, so many people, all great people, you know. Uh, cycling through the show, we had three co-hosts, Stasa23, Slicey Dicey, and Alex Tissot of Alex's Knife Box. They all helped me anchor the show, and we had uh, 18 guests rotate through over a five-and-a-half-hour period. And it was uh, it was like a telethon. It was like a knife telethon. Without any money proceeds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's funny, because... I, I don't even sleep for five and a half hours. I don't do anything for five and a half hours. So it's kind of great to feel like, oh, here, I, I can talk with with knife makers and knife reviewers and knife folk for five and a half hours here and still be fine, ready right. to go. Talk some more. <laughs> well, it was just it was a it was a knife party without the chips and the dips, man. You just got to sit and talk knives. Exactly. We didn't have to go out to Costco and buy all the soda and all that. Yeah. We'll talk more about that uh, coming up toward the end of the show, kind of get a recap and everything, and uh, maybe some future plans for more town halls. Who knows? But uh, we want to do a couple of updates first, Bob, uh, some uh, product-related stuff and the knife giveaway update. If folks remember, for episode number 100, Bob gave away a uh, cold steel broken skull, not the pink variety that uh, that he keeps with him all the time, but... uh, uh, we gave away, or Bob gave away, a cold steel broken skull. And you have a little update about that, Bob? Yeah, uh, Ben Sher was the uh, gentleman who won the knife, and uh, I communicated with him. But uh, my initial order of the broken skull was canceled, and I initially thought uh, canceled by Amazon. I initially thought it was Amazon's fault and that the world was ending and nothing was being delivered. And then I looked at it and I gave him the wrong credit card number. I gave him an old expired credit card number, and they're like, y- "You can't buy this with nothing, buddy." Uh, so I reordered it. I have it in hand, sir, right here. I'm going to uh, get the Snaggletooth MF that's going to ship with it. I'm going to get it in a uh, in a envelope and hopefully get it in the mail on Monday. We'll see. If not Monday, Tuesday, because I know I have to go into the office on Tuesday. Okay. So even though this podcast is airing on Wednesday, we're talking in the <laughs> past tense. So yes, uh, yes. because we were we record several days early, just you know, let the cat out of the bag, folks. <laughs> so uh, by the time you hear this podcast, the knife should have already been shipped. Yeah. And Ben, uh, if you're if you're listening to this midweek on Wednesday, who knows? Maybe you've got it, depending yeah. on where you live, or it could be coming later in the week. Yeah. How's your new knife, Ben? Just kidding. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll, I'll get this. Uh, I'll get this shipped to you. Post haste, sir. And who knows, more uh, knife junkie uh, knife giveaways maybe uh, coming in the future for other milestones as we have. And, you know, something, Bob, we mentioned right before we uh, started recording, kind of a a milestone for us on the podcast is um, our podcast uh, has just over 40,000 downloads Ah. right now. And that's just on the podcast, you know, players. That's not counting all the listens and the views that uh, folks do on uh, YouTube. So, uh, Congratulations, you know, Bob. Good, and, good, and, good work. <laughs> and to you, Jim. Sir. Well, thank you. Thank you. But, but, but congratulations but really, to our listeners and thanks to our listeners. Yeah, thank you to the listeners because really, uh, you know, that's what keeps this going. We, yeah. we wouldn't be just talking into the empty ether, though sometimes I feel like I'm doing that in the house, you know, just wandering around. My wife never myself. listens to me anyway, so. <laughs> but anyway, thank you all, one and all, for listening to this show. I I'm I'm honored that you would spend time, you know, listening to my opinions. And I know you're most interested in hearing from the makers themselves and the reviewers. And and I, I'm grateful I have an opportunity to talk to them all. 
Well, you mentioned uh, Snaggletooth uh, going with the broken skull that you were uh, giving away, but uh, also a little update about the the Snaggletooth MF, something in tumbled aluminum, I think? Yes. Okay, so um, I have a number of Snaggletooth tactical, uh, you know, MFs, the, the pocket deployers. I have a number of them, and they cycle on and off of my cold steel knives. But I noticed, uh, you know, when they started making them out of aluminum, that they made them with a raw aluminum tumbled finish. So it's going to match the silvery blades of my silvery knives better. So I had to pick up two of them, and I just put one on my new cold steel uh, uh, Voyager Chris. And I just have to say, if you have a Voyager Chris, or if you have uh, a Voyager at all, uh, a Snaggletooth MF is definitely a must-have. And if you get it in the tumbled finish, it it looks like it's part of the blade. It just blends right in with the blade. Um, the original models are, are amazing. They're in uh, FRN, I think, or some sort of high tensile plastic. And they are black. And it's a great look on a black blade. But if you want it to match, uh, I would definitely check out the Snaggletooth MF uh, pocket deployer in this tumbled aluminum finish. Jim, you can see it right now. It looks pretty sharp, doesn't it? It does. That was a corny, <laughs> corny, and unintended pun. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'd check it out. And then their aluminum ones are also coming in a uh, coated finish. So he's uh, Rob is coming up with different colors that match different popular G10 colors. And, and right. so far, the pink matches my pink broken skull beautifully. So. Uh, he was on. He was on the. Uh, he came on the town hall. So definitely check check that bit out with Rob Penna talking about the Snaggletooth tactical. And Rob was a uh, well is a dear friend of the uh, the Knife Junkie podcast and was one of our very early guests uh, back on episode number sixteen of the Knife Junkie podcast. The Knife Junkie dot com slash sixteen. The Knife Junkie dot com slash one six. He also was on a uh, later podcast just as a special kind of drop in with a product update. But uh, good friend of the show and uh, congratulations to Rob and Snaggletooth MF for uh, all their continued success and the uh, continued uh, product improvements and additions to the to the product line, if you will. Yeah, it's always good to uh, kind of see small businesses uh, survive and thrive. Yep. And constantly improving. I love that. Yeah. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. We've been talking on this podcast about the uh, Knife Junkie Town Hall that was had on uh, Saturday, April 18th. And we have been noticing that this is going to happen a lot. And Olamic Cutlery uh, is is picking up the slack from all of the canceled uh, knife shows that they are scheduled to go to. So Olamic Cutlery out on the West Coast in California has created Olamic Table. And what Olamic Table is, is it's the virtual table that they would be bringing to all of the knife shows that have been canceled and postponed. Say next Saturday, there's a knife show they're supposed to be at. Well, they will act as if the knife show were going on, uh, but you go to their website and uh, they will have everything that they made to bring to that show available. They will also have uh, ways to chat and meet up with other enthusiasts and, uh, you know, uh, create a community, an online community at this Olamic table. So Olamic enthusiasts and People interested in buying their knives and talking about their knives can all get together and have a, a virtual knife hangout at the virtual Olamic knife table. I think that's a really great idea. I know a lot of people have um, the sort of virtual knife show idea going, but uh, something about Olamic's idea really resonates with me because they've, they've got it regimented. Well, uh, it shows that they planned over the previous year you know, to make certain knives for certain shows. Those knives are made. So they want they don't want to be left holding the bag. How can we get rid of these knives and sell them to our adoring public in a in a fun and compelling way? And it and it seems like they've figured that out. Well, I know actually you and I have have previously talked about doing a, a virtual knife show. Yep. And uh, you know, kind of the uh, the town hall meeting was kind of a different twist on that, but uh, if folks are interested in uh, the knife junkie having a, a virtual knife show, where we just bring on knife makers uh, to sell their products, you know, hey, give us a call or an email. Let us know. Uh, knife Junkie listener line, 724-466-4487. If there's any interest in that, Bob, you know, maybe we could uh, put together a Knife Junkie virtual knife sale or show. Well, that, <laughs> Try that to get be, my words right there. <laughs> that would be interesting. That would be definitely something to figure out for sure. Uh, 
you know, our learning curve might be steep on that one, but I think, I mean, geez, you're not going to hear me say no to that. I also wanted to mention, Jim, that uh, you remember last year we were talking about the monkey muster. That's uh, right, right. So Monkey Edge had their monkey muster this past weekend, uh, I think last week, and it was a giant, ver- it was it was the monkey muster at Monkey Edge, and uh, they get together with the makers, and, and they sell a lot of these fantastically beautiful high-end knives that are sort of customized to the to the monkey edge aesthetic uh oftentimes and i think it's so cool you know um that they did that so i would love to talk to brady i I don't know the the, both of the gentlemen's names i know one of them is brady i'd love to talk to him about it and find out what their experience was you know doing the usual monkey muster which i know is a huge production and then taking that huge production and making it virtual was probably no less huge just different huge yeah, and especially when you consider, uh, you know, events like uh, like that or Blade Show that are that or, or even you know local knife shows that are multiple days, you know, like a Friday night, a Saturday, a Sunday. Yeah. How do you combine all that into you know like just a one day virtual or a half day virtual or a four hour virtual? You know, a lot of logistics and a lot of things to figure out. Definitely for sure. Yeah, and when you have a three dimensional space filled with knives and people, there are ways to keep them in that space. There are ways to attract them over to this part of the space or that part of the space. But when you're seeing everything at a distance online, it might be harder for the organizer to to keep people engaged. So that's another learning curve people are going to have to figure out. How do you keep them in that virtual space mm-hmm. for as long as you want them to be there to buy as much as they're going to buy and all that? Right. Well, and uh, Bob and uh, Susie uh, Terzuola, I think they had a uh, kind of a live knife show with, with mm-hmm. uh, on uh, tying in with the Hawaii theme with the Hawaii uh, uh, knife show that was canceled on, uh, I think, the Terzuola Instagram yeah. account, I believe. So, yeah. yeah, a lot of folks getting in on the virtual thing now. Yeah, I guess they, they decorated Bob's uh, shop to look like a uh, luau. And uh, they the sold. The nice sands of Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. And then they sold his unbelievably gorgeously sublime knives from there see i hope he hears me uh say that compliment <laughs> and then is like oh, maybe this kid kid yeah maybe this 48 year old kid needs me to send him a, a free turs wool and i oh all right come on i'm, I'm going dreaming. off on a fantasy sorry <laughs> yeah We'll uh, talk more about Bob a little later as or Bob Terzuola, not Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco, but uh, talk a little bit more about Terzuola as well as other folks uh, when we kind of wrap up the show, kind of recapping the town hall meeting that was uh, this past Saturday on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel. Uh, continuing on, Bob, with uh, Knife Life News, a little bit of uh, news about a new minimalist utility knife. Well, Jim, this kind of thing does not usually excite me. I know a lot of uh, knife makers over the past, uh, I don't know, 10, 5 to 10 years have made little utility tools. I know Todd Rexford sticks out in my mind uh, for making this really cool, really expensive little titanium device that holds a a razor, uh, you know, much like a Stanley uh, carpet knife razor or whatever, you know, your basic utility razor. Uh, So it's kind of been a a little bit of uh, an underswell of these kind of utility tools coming out. The reason I wanted to talk about Resolute Tools, it's a a new California-based shop. Uh, Their new X1 is an interesting little um, utility razor holder knife thing because, well, the first thing that caught my eye is we have some aerospace engineers making knives. How about that? It's I think it's cool. Everywhere I look, it's a former aerospace engineer. Like the guy who started SOG and the guy who started Emerson, Ernie Emerson. A, a lot of people uh, come from that uh, come from that world into knife design. I think it's because of the the uh, all of the design challenges that go into aerospace work naturally, and the materials and uh, getting the maximum amount uh, from the from the least amount of weight. You know, getting the maximum amount of utility. So that always kind of interests me when I see that it's someone from aerospace or or uh, airplane engineering who goes into this kind of work. Anyway, this is a beautiful little tool. If you have any interest in these kind of uh, uh, work work razor holders, it is completely without any uh, hardware. It is all uh, solidly put together without screws or anything like that. So that it basically, uh, basically what they're stating is the point where you put these little utility knives together with the screws is the weak point. So they've eliminated that weak point with, with some really... Uh, precision designing and then machining so they have this up on uh, kickstarter they've already reached their goal but it's up there until may 18th so if you want to 
you know, hear my words and check this out. It looks pretty cool. If you're into this kind of thing, it, it seems like the one to get. Resolute Tools is based out of San Luis Obispo in California, and uh, this this model is called the X1, the Resolute X1. So check it out; it looks pretty cool. I gotta say, it's the first uh, the first uh, utility knife razor holder that's ever piqued my interest. Mm-hmm. Well, the name X1 uh, kind of uh, sounds like an aerospace engineer. Yeah, yeah. Would it, name that. It sounds like a test bed aeroplane. You know, that's right. You'll be strapping into the X1 and most likely not returning. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> but we can still give you a small little knife to <laughs> for your troubles. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's cool. And we've had uh, several uh, stories here on the Knife Junkie podcast about these uh, crowdsourced Kickstarter kind of campaigns, getting uh, knives made. Uh, I think uh, was it. Big Daddy, Bone uh, Daddy, Blade Bone Works. Daddy Bo- yeah. comes to mind. There was one. Or, there was Axis. a company. Yeah, the company out of China that uh, was oh, doing the, the, the Kunwu, and uh, yeah, yeah, they were they were crowds. They're crowdsourcing, and maybe it's just because I, you know, had had not been familiar with the knife world, you know, many years ago. But uh, it seems like uh, this is kind of a a growing trend, I guess, if you will. Yeah, and actually, you, Jim, changed my mind about this on uh, on one of the shows recently. I think it was the first time we mentioned uh, Kunwu, and they had an, at that time, unfunded right. uh, crowdsourced knife, and it was a uh, titanium frame lock flipper. And I remember saying, do we really need another titanium frame lock flipper out in the market, especially one that's unfunded? And you were like, uh, hey, Bob, here's a knife company coming to market with a new product. Let's support them. You know, this is this is how you get on the map. And I was like, you know what? You're right. And this is an interesting design. People seem to like it. Mm -hmm. Why not? Why am I being a curmudgeon about this? Yes. Get out there. Do your crowdsourcing. And 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 that's that that's the proof in the pudding right there. If people if people want it. Right. They'll crowdsource it. If not, maybe it means that design needs a little tweak. Maybe maybe that flipper needs to be smaller. Maybe, you know, maybe that color is ugly. Who knows? Right. No, it's a it's a great way to. um uh, and I've lost the word for it, uh, but to to verify your product before you go into mass production of something, you know, to make sure your idea is truly a winner that resonates with the market. Yeah, to to sort of read the temperature. Like, I yeah. think this is cool. Is everyone else going to? Right. It's so funny how often uh, I think something is cool and no one else does. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you never know. Maybe crowdsourcing is in my is in my future or not. <laughs> <laughs> Crowd unsourcing. Right. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right, back on the Knife Junkie podcast, episode number 105, our midweek supplemental episode. And uh, Bob, you know, we kind of touched on earlier the the virtual knife sales, the virtual knife tables, you know, the the virtual town hall meeting that uh, we just had this past Saturday that we'll get into. I want to uh, mention this. I think folks already probably know by now, Blade Show uh, has been rescheduled. Those dates are August 7 through 9, still in Atlanta. And I know last week I got my notice that my uh, hotel room reservation had been canceled, uh, you know, through Blade Show, and I would have to uh, remake it. Hopefully I will. I'll have to decide if I want to travel. That's that's the big thing. I'm still a little iffy if if that's a little too close to the timeline where I think all this coronavirus stuff is going to be over with. But uh, if I do, hopefully I can still get my reservations at the courtyard so I won't have to uh, travel very far to the pit. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Well, I I might be sleeping on your floor, Jim. Well, I thought you were going to be doing that before because you you were not so lucky with getting room reservations last time. No, I was not. I I was going to be staying in Florida. (laughs) Uh, But I'm dumb. Don't... uh, don't try your comedy show routine like Slicey <laughs> Dice does. <laughs> well, thank you. No, but anyway, uh, if you're uh, going to go, you might want to start, uh, I think, uh, this week is when the hotel reservations were opening up. So you may want to uh, get your reservations if you're going to be going to Blade Show again, rescheduled to August 7 through 9, uh, still going to be held in Atlanta, Georgia. You know you're a knife junkie if you plan your vacation around Blade Show. So... Part of the reason, Bob, I think we had the idea of doing a uh, virtual town hall was because of the uncertainty about Blade Show being held in June, as well as all the knife shows and sales that are being canceled all over the place that folks couldn't physically go. And we kind of wanted to do something, and that's how the uh, virtual town hall meeting kind of came up, which we held this past Saturday, and we teased about it earlier, five and a half hours of of knife fun. You got a chance to... uh, Talk to makers, manufacturers, knife reviewers, and you know folks in the knife community. So, 
It, it was a great time, I thought. It, it was a great time. And and uh, I like how you teed it up, but it was also a little bit more self-serving than you might be uh, portraying it because you and I uh, were really looking forward to going to Blade Show. And then it got canceled. And I was like, how am I going to meet all the... I was planning on going right. out and meeting all the people that I've just spoken to over this past year. I, I you know, I really want to do that. And I want to keep those ties strong and I don't want to uh, I don't want to lose touch. So uh, so it was not only to fill a gap for other people, but it was to fill a gap for me. <laughs> right. You know, and what a great. OK, my wife and I love throwing parties. We always have. And, uh, you know, we my wife has a huge family and we have a lot of friends here and we and we. Uh, like to open up the house and have a big barbecue, you know, a couple times in the summer. And um, I love going around the party and talking to all my friends and family and loved ones. And that kind of felt like uh, the the uh, town hall was kind of what I was setting that up for myself, you know, uh, to bring these people that I've spoken with and that I really respect and uh, really a quite a variety of personalities and uh, bring them all together. For me, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. not not just for me, but but for everyone to get. And, and then it was get... so nice of you to let others watch. <laughs> Thank you for that. And then to get the com- different combinations of makers and reviewers on the screen at the same time. I, I know you had a blast, Jim, because we've been talking about it for an hour, and uh, and I did too. And I, you know, I, I hope uh, other people got got something out of it. I think people did. Yeah. Well, if again, that was this past Saturday, uh, it's uh, archived on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at the knifejunkie.com slash YouTube. You can uh, watch part or all of it. Again, as we say, five and a half hours of knife fun with a lot of uh, special guests. Bob, you want to do a quick kind of recap about who some of the guests were and, and then maybe we'll get into some of the 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 funnest parts <laughs> yeah you know, that's not a right word but uh, the most enjoyable or the things that stood out at you or whatever but how about first uh, just kind of a recap of who you had on uh we had Stu, who is a, a great friend of this podcast and owns uh, stone and steel a knife company up in vermont uh, that that sells uh, retail knives to uh gun shows and and such great guy Stu. Uh, he's the one who gave me, by the way, my uh, serrated Delica, my malware, and sold me my Praetorian, which I've been going off about. And gave me a CRKT as well. Oh, that's right. He gave yes. me the, uh, the exec. What's it called? The CEO. CEO. A- yeah, I love it. Have it right on my little table, right at the where my keys are and everything. I use it daily to open packages and all kind of good stuff. So thanks again, Stu. Nice. Uh, then we had Greg Medford, the ever colorful and uh, and vivacious Greg Medford. What an understatement! <laughs> it was fun to have him on. You know, he went off on a political bent, but but we kept bringing it back to knives. And man, uh, he's a hard man to stop talking about knives. So it was uh, it was great to have him on. We had Metal Complex, uh, awesome uh, YouTuber that's just skyrocketing in popularity. We had Douglas Esposito, an, an old friend of this show. Uh, um, he's a, a Virginia knife maker and and the maker of my very first custom knife. Uh, so it was great to have him on. And then his uh, his better half, Stacia, Stacia Jennings, uh, reached out through comment from Baghdad. Uh, she had to leave their uh, their cozy home uh, to go to Baghdad. She's in the army uh, not too long ago. So it was great to have her chime in. She's also been on the podcast. We had Marianne Halpern. Uh, of TRM Knives. Oh my God, everyone loves Marianne. She's like, everyone just gathered around her and uh, she's great. TRM as, as a as a part of the knife community is a very strong and uh, they're, they're, they're known for their customer service. And Saturday, I really got to see uh, how much people love her and their knives. Uh, we had the great Eugene Kwan, the, the ever articulate and smart Eugene Kwan came out for a while. Love that man, uh, David C. Anderson from Knife Center, representing not only Nor- uh, Knife Center but Nordsmith Knives, his line of knives. We had Rob Penna on. Rob Penna, we just were speaking about Snaggletooth Tactical out of New Jersey, making aftermarket uh, uh, features for knives like like the MF pocket opener and uh, aftermarket karambit rings for cold steel knives. It was great having Rob Penna and David C. Anderson of Knife Center on at the same time because. Uh, we were like Yentas, Jim. They actually made a love connection there, and they're going. Sorry, they made a business connection there. <laughs> I, I don't know what a Yenta is, and I also didn't like that love connection. But <laughs> I'm sorry, a Yenta is a Jewish matchmaker. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we were like matchmakers, yes, and uh, business matchmakers. Right. And uh, looks like uh, looks like who knows? Knife Center might be selling some of uh, Snaggletooth's product there. 
So we had Bob Terzuola on and planned to have Tashi Barucha on at the same time yeah. for a half hour segment because they uh, recently did a great and beautiful collaboration uh, on this gorgeous knife. And I wanted to have a little shop talk between the two of them. But unfortunately, as we mentioned uh, earlier, uh, Tashi could not get on. I think it has to do something with uh, the international. I think there was some international component to the software we were using that we weren't prepared for or something yeah because he was trying to connect from france and yeah yeah, yeah. just maybe could have been an internet glitch or something but yeah he was in the chat for a while but yeah he was unfortunately and, and we couldn't bring him on yeah we're gonna figure out how to get him on in the future because we're gonna do we're gonna do another one of these it's inevitable but uh yeah so we had bob terzawola what an awesome guy and actually he said he's going to donate uh a copy of the new edition of his book he's gonna donate one of those cool uh dragon shaped uh, titanium openers uh bottle openers that's sort of in in the shape of his logo and then he's also going to donate uh the drop uh terzuola the first drop terzuola uh collaboration knife all of those to me or to the knife junkie uh uh town hall and unfortunately i have to move them all along to you so i will uh hold an auction of all three of these products when we receive them and also Stu from stone and steel oh i knew someone else said that right so, offered to donate uh, i can't remember what it was but yeah so yeah continue on with with your auction all right yeah okay so so we will have these products from bob terzuola and from Stu, and we're going to auction them off and we'll figure out how we're going to do that and then uh, we'll take the proceeds and we'll donate it to, to Knife Rights. I feel there's no no better uh, organization or charity for this particular podcast to uh, donate to than Knife Rights. So that's where our money will be going. And who knows? I might win the auction for the Bob Terzuola knife. I don't know. I just might. Well, and it won't be rigged if you do. So. Oh, hell no. I, <laughs> no it's not going to be rigged. The idea is to raise as much money as possible. I'm right. just preparing the wife that there might be a new oh, Terzawola okay. hanging, around the, gotcha. hanging around the house. And any other guests you want to talk about? And then we had Kevin Cleary. Everyone knows Kevin Cleary. Uh, this it, a little bit of, uh, you know, Kevin Cleary is a YouTube knife reviewer. And the interesting thing, he is a, um, he is a minister and a firefighter, and uh, as well as a knife reviewer and enthusiast up in Canada. And while he was in our green room, that's that's the sort of waiting area before you come onto the onto the screen, uh, he got called on a fire call. So he disappeared from the green room, Jim was telling me earlier. And uh, we're, Jim was kind of like, hmm, I wonder if Kevin's going to join it. He came back and was like, hmm, I had a fire call, but didn't didn't have to go on it. That's right. pretty cool, right? I mean, it's amazing that, uh, you know, folks have this level of service to the community, but uh, still can find time to be involved in the knife community. So yeah. I, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. And, and and it reminded me yet again, here we have the perspective in Kevin Cleary of a first responder. So that, you know, my my taste in knives resonates with his because I think he likes them bigger and beefier because, hell, he might have to bring it with him on a fire call or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So it was great to have Kevin here. We had Nick Chuprin, uh, who was recently on the Knife Junkie podcast. I believe it was 102. A uh, very, very talented young knife maker out of New York City, which is always an interesting thing, a New York City knife maker. We had Alan Elishowitz and Michael Janich on at the same time. Uh, two great guys. Alan Elishowitz, who is a uh, a, a very well-known uh, knife maker, been around in the uh, tactical folding knife making game for ages. And uh, he is the main designer for Hogue Knives. And Hogue is just knocking it straight out of the park. I had to have my... Uh, Alan Elishowitz designed Hogue Tomahawk on on the uh, on the air just to show off when he was here, and uh, and then we also had Michael Janet. Oh, the funny thing is, is Alan Elishowitz was talking uh, was was on screen from his car right. because on that day he had a nine hour shooting seminar uh, set up, and he had already paid the money for the range, so he went to the range anyway. And uh, he was kind of the lone lone gunman at the range. That sounds not right, but you know <laughs> right, what I mean. Right. And uh, yeah, so he he does uh, classes and tactical gun stuff. I mean, he's a former Marine recon and and uh, special forces guy. You know, he's he's one of the, another yet another man you don't want to mess with who makes just amazing a badass guns. dude. <laughs> yeah, but also just a cool, cool, nice guy. Yes, he sounded he looked that way. First time I had ever you know met him, and yeah, yeah. He, he just seemed really cool, laid back. And then we had Janich, Michael Janich, come on. He's the uh, designer of the Yojimbo 2 and the Janisong and uh, uh, several other knives for Spyderco. 
uh, where he works, but he is also greatly known for his knife combative skills. He has a program called MBC, uh, that's Martial Blade Concepts, and uh, he takes uh, the knife fighting concepts that he learned from the various uh, Filipino styles, and I think he did some Japanese knife fighting stuff too. He's, he's done a lot of uh, traditional uh, knife fight training stuff in the past. He's taken those and sort of uh, uh, modernized them. And I thought something that was really interesting that he mentioned was that a lot of the classical arts that I've trained in, for instance, Kali, classical uh, Filipino uh, sword, knife, and stick fighting, uh, doesn't doesn't address drawing a fold a folder from your pocket. Something very simple. It kind of starts from you have the knife in your hand. And um, Michael Janich's angle is, well, this this day and age, you know, we're not walking around with swords and we don't have knives in our hands usually. So we have to draw it. And so he he um, he on the knife side, he also teaches gun stuff. But on the knife side, he really teaches uh, a modernized version of some some classical stu- uh, concepts. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you still have to draw the knife. Without fumbling it out of your hand, you're going to be nervous. Right. Things right. are going to, you know. Wait, wait just a minute, Mister yeah, Attacker. Yeah. Let me get my knife out. Yeah, hang on. Yeah, check out how I how I <laughs> Spidey flick it. Right. So, uh, you know, his 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 perspective very interesting, and then yeah. to have him on with Alan, I know they know each other. So yeah. that's cool. And one thing I thought was cool, folks will have to uh, watch the video and see it. He 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 panned his camera over to a <laughs> table or two of all these products down there that. Uh, kind of wet our appetite of uh, things to look at and talk about. So kind of a teaser there that we weren't able to dive fully into. But if you want to see and try to figure out some of that stuff, you'll uh, catch the uh, catch the, the show on replay on the YouTube channel. Well, maybe next time, you know, this this is a uh, wet my appetite for a longer form video podcast interview kind of thing. And maybe we who knows, maybe we narrow it down to uh couple of people at a time or whatever but but uh, yeah janet showed off uh, all of the knives that he's designed for various companies blackhawk and and mod uh when they were around and and uh and that kind of thing so it was great to have him and then we had scheduled greg lightfoot unfortunately greg had some issues uh, uh some technical issues he's up on his gorgeous multi-hundred acre ranch up there in uh in canada and and there was an issue getting through but I think we may have worked it out, and uh, so we'll get him on the next one for sure. I know uh, Alex and I were excited to have Greg on because we both have custom light foots. Alex just won his actually in a in a contest that Greg had on Instagram, so we wanted to talk to him about our. That's knives. a nice way to get a light foot winning. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's the best way to get a light well, foot. Um, so we we hope to have him next time. We had Jay Nielsen, which brought the brought the oh, house man, down. He was awesome. He's such a cool guy, you know. Jay Nielsen, uh, one of the judges on Forged in Fire, and uh, a super incredibly accomplished uh, uh, knife smith himself. I mean, that's why he is a judge on that show. And uh, he is such a great guy. You know, I watch him on the show, and he's very stolid and 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 uh, and uh, serious on that show, except when he gets to test things, and then mm-hmm. you see him open up. But it's so great. Uh, the time we had him on the podcast, uh, I can't remember what number it was, but uh, you, know, you can just look it up. Uh, he's so he's such a fun guy to hang out with. He is he's funny and uh, um, I don't know. He's just he he opens up in a different way than he does on on the television show. So it was it was really great to have him. And I know Alex was starstruck when when right. he saw Jay Nielsen come on. Because he's been watching uh, Forged in Fire since the very start, yeah. hasn't missed an episode, and was, so that was great to have him. Yeah, Jay uh, Nielsen was uh, podcast number thirty-four. That's at thenifejunkie.com dot com slash thirty-four. But yeah, when he first came on, I was like, "Holy cow, is this the same dude that you interviewed on the podcast?" Because I noticed that very same thing. He was much more um, animated and much more of a character there in his shop. Uh, yeah. Than from the from the podcast interview we had, but yeah, that, that was cool. I, I enjoyed that segment as well. Yeah, I re- I'd, I'd love to go. Well, I'm going to invite myself someday to every one of these people's <laughs> shops, but I'd love to go hang out in his shop and watch him make a knife. That's just a given. Bob's yeah. going to show up at your shop, so just be ready for it. Hey, I, I, hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Next, we had Super Steel Steve in uh, in in full regalia with talk his talk about a character <laughs> with his heat treat police uh, uh, hat on and his big glasses and and his uh, his apron. Uh, Steve has a lot of bravado and has a bit of an online character. Um, and and you either you know he's polarizing you like him or you don't i like him 
Uh, but I especially like him for his uh, his knowledge. He's a smart dude, and and uh, you know you'll see him snap into serious mode right away when you start talking about blade steels and heat treat and geometry. And uh, like myself, 154 CM or CPM 154 is his favorite favorite steel. And I know that's an unsung steel these days because it's way less glamorous than 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 what you're paying top dollar for. But but uh, Super Steel Steve is a chef and uses a knife on a daily basis and has really, uh, you know, uh, really gained knowledge, really uh, acquired around him. I don't know how to say this. He is a knowledgeable guy on specifically on the heat treat and geometry issue. So it was great to have his perspective on. And then we had Matt Martin uh, of uh, Vehement Knives. I love Matt Martin. He is a man. He is not only does he make really cool military inspired modernized field knives, with all the traditional touches of stacked leather handles and that kind of thing, which are just amazing and gorgeous. But he's also a very cool and smart guy and knows a lot about knives and the history of knives and kind of the context in the modern, uh, in the modern age, you know, he knows what his uh, wheelhouse is and, and he's expanding out of it. Also, he's going to be, uh, as he alluded to in the podcast, we had him on here. He will be making uh, uh, and is working actively on a folder which is exciting to me because we know his aesthetic is traditional in terms of knives. So it'll be cool to see what he comes up with for a folder, which I know will have some of that traditional military uh, design language. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that. And Matt Martin, just a cool and fun guy to have around and talk with. And then lastly, we had Elliot Williamson, one half of Ferrum Forge, join us. And Elliot was joining us from California and uh, we had an interesting conversation because, of course, in this environment, I'm asking people about productivity. How how has the how has the pandemic affected uh, productivity? And it was very interesting to hear that he and his brother, who who are a very interesting pair, I think they have very complementary talents. Uh, from what I gathered from their their podcast, and that's kind of like, you know, a, a little bit of yin and yang really goes a long way to make something whole. And uh, they were talking about he was talking about how they had gotten together in 2019 and said, let's just get all of 2020 worked out. Let's get all the designs ready. Let's get everything out and in the works. Uh, I don't know if that was premonitory or what, but uh, they sort of uh, got all their all their ducks in a row uh, before all of this hit. And so they're just sort of riding it in a way that that is admirable. I, I um, <laughs> as you may know, Jim, as you may be acutely aware uh, being a planner is not something that is natural in my, you know, I, I plan things for what? Pr- productions and work and, you know, and, uh, you know, I plan what I'm going to have for dinner. Uh, but <laughs> on the whole, I'm not a huge planner. And, uh, you know, you and my wife are acutely aware of that. And <laughs> and so to talk to someone like Elliot, who who had planned out the whole year and got everything, um, everything ready to go is... Really great to hear because when I when I think about knives and I think about the knife business, I only think about the fun romantic stuff to me, mm-hmm. designing them, making them, mm-hmm. testing them, holding them, selling them. I don't think about the planning of buying materials, like the business side of the it, business yeah. side of it. I know I know um, Ferrum Forge has changed their business model a bit, and they're not so concerned about buying materials anymore. But they're also dealing with China all the time, so they have a lot of uh, right. A lot of uh, moving parts to harmonize. How do you import all that? And the you know used to, the the big talk way back when was the import tax, and now the coronavirus. How has that affected Chinese production? Yeah, a lot of a lot of moving parts, as you say. Yeah. So from from Elliot uh, Williamson, I feel like we got a really interesting view into some of the business concerns that that knife enthusiasts such as myself just just don't think about because yeah. we don't have knife companies to worry about or keep afloat. Def- definitely a different perspective. Yeah. 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 And uh, and uh, <laughs> yeah, there I, I didn't realize this uh, when I was scheduling. But incidentally, there's a bit of a uh, an enmity between Super Steel Steve and Elliot Williamson. And they came dangerously close to being on the screen at the same time. <laughs> and I, I, I wasn't going to let that happen. I mean, what may, maybe a different time if they're both into into having a debate, I would host it. But uh, I did not want uh, I did not want things to go down any sort of a road that I couldn't control myself. So, mm. oh, okay. So, uh, but, but, uh, the two of those guys, I like them very much. They're way on different sides of the temperament scale. Uh, but, uh, uh I was glad to have them both on and have, have dueling perspectives yeah. on things. Yeah. 
So definitely thanks to everybody that uh, that came on the Knife Junkies' first ever Knife Town Hall meeting. Uh, as Bob has alluded to, uh, who knows, you know, maybe we'll have some uh, future town hall meetings coming up uh, down the road sometime. Yeah, and, and and a big, big, big thanks to Stasa23, Slicey Dicey, and Alex Tissot of Alex's Knife Box for co-hosting with me. They were there almost the whole time, pretty much the whole time. And, uh, man, I really appreciate it. Their insight is invaluable and just their presence. I like them all as people, so it was great to have them. It's like having a, having your friends close by when you're going through something. And uh, and then, of course, to have their, have their amazing perspectives because they all have – sort of cover a different realm of the knife collecting world to have them all together with me backing me up uh was uh was a great honor so thank you guys well as you said it was just you know for for lack of a better word you know you came up with town hall meeting you know it was just a knife party you know a chance to as you said hang out with knife friends and buddies and and talk knives so yeah 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 but to clarify i came up with the name town hall meeting jim you came up with the idea and i'm grateful for that too because this is yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is something I, I, this is something I would not put on myself. I don't think. But now that we did it once, I now I'm happy to. But hmm, maybe I'll do this big giant production and invite all these people. It's just easier for me to be like, nah, that's just a thought. But when you said it to me, and I'm like, that's a cool thought, then I had to do it. So, boom. well, and I think the key for us both was putting a date on the calendar and then publicly saying it we're going to do it and that, yes, that forces yes. us to do it so but that is the thing publicly saying it yeah yeah i'm getting all straight a's this semester mom <laughs> you know i never said that but <laughs> i never said it either <laughs> but if i did i would have had to yeah okay well yeah anyway we oh, and, and, i'm sorry one last thing i i gotta i gotta give a, a shout out to my family my mom and dad were listening That's they true. listened to the entire thing they, they went about their day while they had that going. My mom is making masks right now because she's awesome. Oh, cool. And so that was part of her mask making thing. And uh, I know my dad was sitting by and then they cleared the table and and uh, made a pizza and, and, and listened to the rest of the show while eating dinner. So thank you, mom and dad. I appreciate that. My brother Vic was listening and, and chimed in a few times, which, you know, is always great. He's been a big part of my knife life. And then my brother-in-law, who comes up as the Candyman 101, that was what oh, they okay. called him when he was in Iraq, <laughs> uh, he chimed in a few times with some snarky remarks, which I love. So thanks for everyone that, that, we, that we know who listened as well. Yeah, and thanks uh, to everybody that did watch, and especially for commenting, for being a part of the show. And, uh, you know, being our first time doing this, yeah. it was almost overwhelming on the production side of it, trying to juggle all the guests and bring everybody on. But, um, you know, as we do these, you know, in the future, if we do, but also for Thursday Night Knives, we do have the ability to bring people on the show if they want to join in, if they have a, a question they want to ask you or, or just show off a knife or sell a knife or whatever, we do have that ability for folks to to join the actual show. So every Thursday night at 10 p.m. when Bob goes live with Thursday Night Knives, if you have a question, a comment or whatever, you have a webcam, that's all you need, yeah. a webcam that has a mic, yeah. you can join in for a couple of minutes. And, and as we learned from this, uh, from the town hall, if you have a smartphone, it works from your smartphone. That's you true. don't even need headphones, we found out. And I was wearing these the whole damn time. So uh, really, it's it's very easy to get on to Thursday Night Knives. And and you know what? We're going to bring you on for two to five minutes, and then boom, you're gone. So don't worry about uh, you know overexposure or anything like that. Yeah, big, and, huge uh, time commitment, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it'd be fun. And that's a great point, too, Bob. The smartphone works, yeah. So that's that's awesome, because I think Marianne joined by smartphone, and yep. uh, maybe yeah, even somebody else. Al- Alan uh, Alishowitz did. That's true, from his car. Yeah, that's yep. right. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, again, if you uh, you missed it or you did watch the entire five and a half hours and you just want to go back and watch it again because a lot of great nuggets of knowledge, thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube, thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. You can find the whole show there. That's, again, where you'll find Thursday Night Knives. Uh, that's uh, live every Thursday night at 10 p.m. And again, our podcast, this midweek supplemental every Wednesday, our interview show every Sunday. Uh, all that information can be found at thenifejunkie.com. We've run a little long, Bob, on our supplemental, but uh, final word from you as we wrap up this show. Oh, just a great big thanks to everyone who's uh, who's helped the show get to where it is right now and allowed me the opportunity and, and, and you, Jim, the opportunity to, to meet all these interesting people. It's awesome. Thank you guys so much. Absolutely. Thank you for listening. The Knife Junkie podcast, episode number 105. 
For Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco, I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie Person. Thanks so much, truly, for listening. We appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.